Hi, I'm Sam Master Mateo. I'm an associate professor of practice uh, in electrical and computer engineering here at the University of Akron, and I'm the faculty advisor to the uh, University of Akron NASA robotic mining team. Hi, I'm Lucas. I'm the president of the team. I'm a fifth year mechanical engineering major, and I'll be doing some narration throughout the video. Hello, I'm Andrew Sharkey. I'm the project manager on the NASA robotics team and I will also be doing some narration, and I will be the one driving the robot. This is our 2023 Proof of Life video. We hope you enjoy. We're gonna wave the robot. Fifty nine point eight. Okay. Right to the floor. Uh, Sixty point zero. Okay. It's about 98.4 centimeters. Okay. So now I'll talk a little bit about the electrical portion of the robot. So here is our power monitor that monitors the amount of power usage we have. Over here is our main control box, which contains the ESP32 that we use for remote uh, connection. Uh, we, here's our relay boards that we use in order to control the actuators on our robot. We have four relays per actuator set. And down here we have a PWM uh, output board that we use for controlling the motors. Over here we have the actual motor controllers that we use to run our uh, motors. Uh, these are given input from our PWM board and uh, they will take it and convert it to the uh, sufficient power to actually run the motors. So over here we have our battery pack. Uh, we use four lithium ion battery packs in order to power the robot. Uh, each pack produces 7.4 volts, so two of the power, two of the batteries will be in parallel, uh, and two of them will be in series. Here we have our control box that we use for controlling the robot. Uh, so we have uh, eight buttons and two joysticks. So this joystick will control forward and backwards on the robot. This joystick controls how fast the, uh, the excavation digging system runs. Here, here we have uh, moving or each of the buttons. The yellow will be in one direction, blue will be the other direction for each of the other motor sets. In here is the ESP32 that we uh, connect to the ESP32 on the other robot through Wi-Fi. We currently have no autonomous uh, control. It will all be manual. All right, so here is our mining arena. We have the digging area down there by the line. Um, then we have these two rocks, or actually three rocks, and two craters in our obstacle area. And then here we have our robot starting in a random orientation 
um, with the collection bin behind it. So the robot is now maneuvering through the obstacle area. Steering past the craters, it has already crossed into the excavation zone. Alright, so the robot is in the excavation zone now. So our robot is starting to dig. We have a bucket on the back that moves inward and outward. And then we have the bucket chain system in the front being lowered by two actuators. And uh, the motor inside is moving the bucket chain, picking up little bits of dirt with every bucket. Dumping into our bucket in the back here. So the robot is about six inches deep now. So our bucket is being loaded up with some dirt now, and we're going to get to the gravel pretty soon. Alright, so we have a bucket full of dirt right now, and we are moving that out to uh, dump it out the back. So we dumped out mostly dirt there, and then we'll dig deeper for some gravel. some of the gravel being picked up by the uh, bucket chain system. Our robot is continuously digging, getting deeper and deeper with every little scoop to collect more gravel continuously. All right, so now we are pushing it in reverse to make sure any of the dirt in the bucket is uh, getting pushed towards the front. And now we're going deeper.
All right, so the robot is now once again pushing some of the gravel that it collected towards the front of the bucket. Let's make sure we can leave a little bit more room on top as the uh, bucket chain system enters the hole again. Picking up gravel as it gets deeper. done digging. So we are now maneuvering. Robot is trying to turn around to uh, head back to the collection bin. All right, so the robot got stuck over there, but we carried it over here to show proof that it can dump what it collected. So once the robot would make its way back to the collection bin, it will lower the excavation bucket chain as it did and then we have this bucket sliding out and then we have a scissor lift lifting the gravel that it collected and clearing the collection bin by a lot uh, there goes the rest of it all right so the bucket is on an actuator right there that moves these two joints that can push it over. And then the bucket collapses back downward. All right, and then here's the dirt and gravel that we collected from the robot. So we uh, picked up the box of gravel that we collected, pouring it into a sieve right here. All right, so now the sand is going through this wire frame that we have, and you can see the gravel is now exposed. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right, so there we have pretty much all gravel and that. Oh, we could use the water. There we go. All right, and we have some more in the box here, as you can see. All right, box is now empty trying to get rid of the excess sand that was collected and keep the gravel on there as best that we can. All right, I can hear all the gravel and there it goes into that bucket there. Okay, so we brought the gravel back inside and now we're gonna weigh it. So here it's zeroed out in an equivalent bucket that we have it stored in. The weight is 1.68 kilograms.